race cars is the craziest old thing. Um, these use what's called an oil bath uh, intake, like air cleaner or whatever. And if you look closely in here, there's actually like a mesh and then beneath the mesh is like this uh, material that gets saturated in oil and acts like a, like kind of like an air filter. It's just the craziest thing. Um, I'd never seen it before, <laughs> before this thing. So you literally have oil in your intake so it gets to be a little bit of a mess taking this off, and we've kind of got to figure that out. There's quite a bit of standing oil in it. So that's one of the things you have to take off, is this oil bath intake. <laughs> so, yeah, there you go. <laughs> so there we go, there's our, our little carburetor. You can see, like, on this side, this gasket doesn't look too bad. No, we'll still it pop it off there, but it looks like if you see here, it looks like somebody's had it apart. Yeah. I mean, we we know that we've got a leak issue in here somewhere, though. So obviously we're gonna we're gonna get into it. But um, so let's start by just pulling off the choke cable. It's a flat head. All right. You just want a pry bar? Uh, I want a hammer. I'll just hit it until it comes <laughs> off of there. wires off. So we've got a vacuum line, got this vacuum line, fuel line. Carburetor rebuild time. All right, so thanks for joining us, guys. Um, what we're doing today is a video focused on uh, flathead V8 carburetors. Um, I think this probably translates to the uh, the six cylinder, but this particular one is off of the 8BA uh, flathead V8. Um, and so, just some of the symptoms that we're dealing with: uh, we had a gas leak, uh, and we're thinking it's between. Uh, this um, butterfly plate, um, plenum, whatever you'd want to call yeah, it. These are weird. Almost like a spacer between the carb and the intake, but it's got two butterflies in it. Yeah, and it's the actual throttle butterflies aren't in the carburetor themselves. It's actually in this little plenum. And somebody at one point in time used gasket maker, so we're gonna put a new gasket in there. That should help with some of the seepage and leaks. Yeah. Even so that's the symptoms that we've been dealing with. A little bit of uh, gas leakage, and we think it's between the carb and this plenum. So we're gonna split that apart, and then we're gonna kind of inspect the inside of it. So far, everything that we've seen, just from like looking down the barrel of it, it looks pretty good. It looks like this thing's been taken apart and cleaned recently. Which is expected. It's a semi-old carburetor. Someone's yeah. gonna take it apart at some point in time. <laughs> exactly. So, yep, first steps, we'll split the top of it off, get a look at it, and then, um, you know, replace whatever looks like it's problematic. Um, we've got an entire gasket set here, and this is from uh, Shoebox Central, which is kind of like the go-to for um, anything uh, old Ford shoebox related. 
And in this case, this carb kit, I think this actually works for the, the older flatheads as well. It's kind of a somewhat universal flathead kit. Um, so you can see that there's multiple versions of kind of the same parts um, where there's like slight differences. For instance, this is that um, carburetor to plenum gasket. You can see that there are holes in different spots. I think those are vacuum ports. Um, so subtle differences between all the carbs, but they supply you with this kit that has a little bit of everything in it. So uh, let's start taking her apart. Yeah, should, should be, be fairly simple. Uh, <laughs> should be. Flyhead screwdriver. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, so what we'll do is we'll start with the side that attaches to the oil bath. Um, pop that apart first. If you're doing this at home, don't be afraid to take pictures. There's so many little pieces and alignments and adjustments. Photo everything so you have reference pictures when you're reassembling. It definitely helps that somebody's torn this apart before. Nothing seems to be uh, anything, which is nice. That. Yeah, there's our float. Okay. Okay, so um, it looks like the top actually exposes the, um, this is the bowl. Uh, usually when you see these on like motorcycle carbs, they're actually on the very bottom underneath the round slide. So in this case, this is actually a chamber that's on the side of the, the body. And this is the float. So when the uh, fuel level comes up in here, then this float actually is pushed up and then that shuts off the fuel coming in. So that could have been part of the problem we were having too, is that this thing wasn't shutting off. So what we'll go ahead and do is we'll replace that piece for sure. That's really easy to do. There's just a little slide pin that holds the float in place. Push that out, take your float off, everything's right there. Okay, uh, so what we have here is, uh, it's called an accelerator pump, um, and what that does is it is intended to smooth the transition from idle to sort of that off idle throttle, so uh, consider that like tip in. Um, and yeah, what that does is it provides a little bit of fuel uh, to compensate and make that kind of a smooth transition. Then. Yeah. So what we're going to do is I think we'll replace this because these have this is obviously brand new. We don't know that that was ever replaced. It could have just been cleaned the last time. We've got one screw on the bottom. Interesting. So they use some kind of an RTV in here. Um, I don't know why, because there's a seal in the first place. So we may be finding something like a um, an uneven uneven uh, mating surface and there could be vacuum leak issues in here. But we had gasoline coming out, so it's safe to say that we actually have like a float problem. Um, or float problem, or just like a bad seal or something like that. Yummy. It's gonna get cleaned up. Yep, so that goes in like that. Okay, so we've got quite a bit to clean up here and um, replace a couple of the valves. <laughs> Spark valve, uh, whatever this funky plunger deal is. We're really great with terminology. Yep. <laughs> We're gonna replace the silver part and the bronze part. Yeah, which this might just be like a, a zinc coated steel, yeah. not even bronze, it's probably what it is, but. We're gonna replace all of these pieces. We'll show you guys how to do each part of that. So, all right, let's, Yay. hey, <laughs> let's clean somebody else's gasket maker off.
direction. That's right, at least everybody's staring at you when you're in this. So everyone's like, okay, what's the guy gonna do? Is he gonna make it through the intersection? Yeah. Is it gonna die in the intersection? <laughs> okay, cool, we survived. Yay. It's getting warm in this thing with the windows up. <laughs> we can crack open the little vents on the side. Nah, too much air movement, too much noise. No, it would stay a little bit cooler in here if you just shut up for a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. <laughs> All right, you guys, uh, hopefully this was uh, helpful for you. Um, this is our, our tutorial, our DIY, or whatever you want to call it, on rebuilding a Holly 94 carburetor for a flathead Ford. Yep, pretty self-explanatory, uh, not too complicated of a system. If you do buy one of those kits online, they got a nice sheet that's got all the parts, it's labeled. Yeah, how handy not, is that? Not too bad, yeah, it's super you sweet. Know. Like, even for a novice, it's uh, it's pretty nice and straightforward. Um, not only is the carburetor really simple compared to a lot of them, um, it's also that, you know, when you buy it from like Shoebox Central, they literally give you the diagrams with it. So that's super handy. Yeah, and they even give you a little tips on how to tune it and what to adjust and look out for and all that right? too. So that's <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Yeah, that was super cool. Yeah, so, all right, well, hopefully this was helpful. Um, if you guys have any other pearls of wisdom to let us know about this process, uh, why don't you drop those in the comments? And, um, I don't know, subscribe if you care to. Yep. And uh, I guess we'll see you on the next one. Bye.